Hello, this is a video about this guitar. It's the first one I made. Uh, it took me about six weeks between January and March 2016. I got the wood from the Bristol Wood Recycling Project near where I work. Uh, I wasn't after anything specific when I went in there. I just knew I needed a piece that was already almost the right size because I didn't have any tools. So I just had to get everything as I went along, really. I picked this up out of a bin that was just labelled hardwoods and when I got to the till the bloke told me it was mahogany so I thought that was pretty cool because that's what Les Pauls are made of. I'm not going to do the whole thing Jack and Ori style so uh, get yourself a cup of tea or a beer and let me tell you a story. <laughs> There's the plank of wood on a bus. I got it on my lunch break and because I cycle, my wife brought it home for me. And she sent this photo to me of it looking out the window with a sort of pensive look on its face. As you can see, it's pretty grey, so it must have been outside at some point. But it was only three quid, so that's not bad for mahogany. That's how I originally thought I'd make it, but it looks kind of dumpy. So I flipped it around and instantly looked more like a guitar with the neck coming out of the flat edge, kind of like cutaways. Here's the fretboard. It's a 600mm scale length and I used the Stumac fret calculator to mark it out. This is obviously where I decided to start filming myself. That's our old house. We didn't have much of a garden to speak of so I just had to do everything inside. I'm installing the inlays here. This reminded me of the Goonies for some reason. Now I'll hand over to past me reporting from the field. Okay, so here's where I am at the moment. Uh, this is the main bit of mahogany for the neck and the body. Cut the end off, glued it to the bottom for a nice thicker bit. Most of this is going to be inside the biscuit tin. It comes up to about there, so there's a bit of a heel and stuff, so you can get all the the strings are going to go up through the back and you know through through body strings and then at the other end I've got the scarf joint the headstock obviously i'm going to have to make this a bit thinner at some point to mount some uh, machine heads on which i haven't yet acquired but yeah that's uh it's coming along all right i'm reasonably happy with that how this has come so far it resembles a guitar well part of a guitar at least and i've got the fretboard here which has currently got the inlays still drying in it and cut those off and then sand it back down. Um, fretboard's made of oak, which isn't really recommended for fretboards because of the open pores, it gets, it's quite rough and bumpy. Um, but I didn't want to go straight into this in case I buggered it up. And then that was just the neck ruined rather than if I got a fretboard, I can replace it if I want. Obviously these will be gone by then. I'll uh, glue that on there, keep sanding it and sanding it and getting it as fine and fine as possible. Then I'm going to try and uh, grain fill it so I can get it smooth, so that maybe that can counteract the, the the roughness of it being oak. Pretty sure it's oak, I think it's oak. It seems to look like it and it smells like uh, an old desk I used to have, so I think it's oak. And then once that's fixed on there, then that will, then I can sand all this down and uh, carve the neck curve and all that kind of stuff and make sure it's all perfectly square and even and then I will know exactly what size holes to cut in my tin and then I can pop it in and then I can figure out where all the uh, bridge and stuff's going to go. So that's, uh, that's where I am so far. Well, didn't I sound enthusiastic? Here's some more requisite sped up footage to wake you up. This time I'm chopping off the inlays and apparently drinking wine.
figured out my pickup location and screwed the ring on so I can use it as a template for where to make the hole. It's fastened onto the back with tiny little nuts and bolts. The last couple of guitars I've made have wood glue on the back to screw into, but I want to go back to this method really, I think it's a bit tidier. This is where I started carving the neck. I used a rasp to get most of it off, just did it kind of by feel really. I kept going until I got an even curve on the back. It's quite chunky, almost a full semicircle. It's comfortable though. Looks like I cut my finger. Wouldn't have been the first time, definitely wasn't the last. There's the holes drilled out for the machine heads. For some unknown reason, I didn't put any wood behind it when I did that, so I had a horrendous chip out on the back. I was using a brad point, so maybe I thought it was gonna cut through or something magic like that. I filled it with some brown wood filler, so it looked okay, and I've never made that mistake again. I found this weird clip where I think I was playing with a macro lens rather than actually showing off the fretboard, but here it is anyway. The inlays look nice. I decided not to grain fill in the end. After sanding it to a really high grit, I was happy enough with how smooth it was. It wasn't bumpy like I was expecting and grain filling seemed like a bit of overkill for this kind of thing. There I am banging in the frets. This was really fun and it was the part where it actually started to feel like I was finally working on a guitar. It's undermined a bit by the fact that I'm resting it on a book that needs must. I got the strap pins for free. The website I went on had them at zero pounds by mistake. Back to past me again for the first attempt at stringing up. So, uh, this isn't finished yet at all. Um, I've just put some strings on it. <laughs> strings that are probably five, six years old at least. I've been sat in a tin this whole time, just uh, waiting for something I knew they'd come in handy someday. And uh, here they are. Uh, I've just put the strings on to figure out you know, heights and everything, where, you know, how deep I need to cut the uh, nut holes, as it were. Um, and the bridge, figure out what the bridge is going to be. Obviously, it's not going to be a spanner, just blue tacked to the top. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully, I'll figure something out a bit better than that uh, when it comes to it. 
Uh, but that's just there, literally just so I can put strings on and because I want to want to get some strings on and have, have a little rip on it. Uh, obviously I haven't actually done any of this yet, so the intonation itself doesn't doesn't actually make any sense. But uh, yeah, just, just wanted to have a quick go on it, see what it sounds like. Pretty rubbish, sustain of a cow and uh, it's pretty quiet so <laughs> hopefully I can sort that out um, obviously there's still a long way to go but uh, it's getting there I hope it certainly resembles a guitar a lot more than it used to which is which is nice um, the, obviously there'll be a pickup there so it can be amplified and everything but it's really quiet with that hole so with that covered up it's going to be inaudible practically, so I might end up having to drill some other holes in it somewhere to um, to make it work acoustically as well as electrically. Uh, but there you go, that's where it is at the moment. Thanks me! There's the bridge design I came up with. Underneath those washers, the actual holes the screws go in are 10 mil in diameter, so the idea is you can shuffle the bridge around for intonation and then clamp it down by tightening the screws. When I first put strings on, the tension caused the lid to massively sag, so the strings were buzzing on the frets. To compensate, I put a long piece of leftover fret wire under the front edge of the bridge. Luckily it worked. After lots of sanding, I put on some T-coil. There are better oils for guitars, but this was the easiest and cheapest for me to get hold of. I did look it up first to make sure it wasn't a massive faux pas. That's an earth cable, but I took it out when I twigged that the electrical components are all earth and they make direct contact with the tin anyway. That's a little L-shaped screwdriver I cobbled together to get into that tight spot. It wasn't a keeper, but it lasted long enough to do that. Yeah, <laughs> there's my first ever label. Professional, in it. There you can see the filler on the back of the headstock, which is disguised reasonably well by the machine heads. I stole them off an old acoustic. I didn't have any proper nut files, so I just used the hacksaw for the top strings and just had to file out massive channels for the bass strings. Works okay though. Does the job. I coloured the pickup ring gold with a metallic fluid ink pen, and then coated it with clear gloss, which may or may not have been nail polish. Well, that's pretty much it, so I'll shut up a sec so you can listen to it.
is four years later. I was pretty happy with how it turned out though I knew it wasn't perfect obviously. I was really pleased just to have been able to finish building it and uh, generally pretty relieved that it worked as a musical instrument at all and didn't just make an atonal racket. Naturally all the music you've been hearing in the video has been played on this. Uh, obviously it's got a normal pickup so it sounds pretty much like a normal guitar really. But it does sound better acoustically than I feared in that original clip. Check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe if you did and tell me what you thought of my ham fisted approach. I was flying by the seat of my pants the entire time, so any criticism is likely to be valid. If you've already subscribed, thanks for that and thanks for coming back. I hope you're still enjoying the videos. Cheers!